All right, so there's a few things we're gonna focus on as we analyze this video. First, you know, sticking to fundamentals. So being forceful before we try to get fast, pushing ourselves up each step as we accelerate, rising out of acceleration into good posture, being efficient with our movements at top speed and throughout the whole race, really. Um, maintaining posture as we come through the finish of the race and letting the finish come to us or let the finish come to you. These are really keys that we can pick up on in this race. You know, as Terrence is pulling away from the crowd, people are gonna start to tie up, they're gonna lose their posture, and it really helps him separate himself from everybody else. So if we go to the very beginning of this race, you know, the first thing is being forceful early in the sprint before we try to get fast. And if we watch Terrence, as he comes out, you're gonna see he's got bigger arm angles than he has later in the race, He's really covering, pushing, launching himself. And then by about 20 meters, he's starting to get upright right about here. And from here on out, he really just starts to dominate everybody. You know, once he's upright, it's pretty much game over. Um, if we look back here in acceleration, you know, he started pretty much with everybody else. A couple people are gonna beat him to the 10, but he's not worried. He's just going through his acceleration, building up momentum, being a little bit more forceful, spending a little bit more time on the ground, which is indicated by that his arm is getting more open than it does at top speed. He's spending a little bit more time on the ground, which allows that arm to open up. And that arm opening up is a sign that he's spending a little bit more time on the ground here, which is what you need to do early in a race, because that's where you have the ability to put out more force and to build up momentum. We wanna build up momentum as we accelerate, and that's what he's doing here. Now he doesn't stay down excessively long. You know, a lot of people will say, oh, your drive phase has to be this or that. And oftentimes they'll be saying that when all they're really looking at is someone keeping their head down or keeping their chest down. Um, the drive phase is kind of a myth. Um, you know, we accelerate to top speed and then we start slowing down. So if you wanna say that there's a drive phase, well, I guess you could say that the whole acceleration is a drive phase, but he's still accelerating here. You know, this is, mm, this is about 20 meters, this is about 30 meters. So he's still accelerating for sure. But is he leaning forward? Is he keeping his head down? No, he's exhibiting great posture. His torso's upright, his head is up on top of his body. It's not leaned too far forward or, you know, back behind him. He's not trying to overextend and over push. He's just getting as much as he can out of that ground strike under him and then switching the limbs or you know reversing the limb direction and getting the leg to come up compressing that spring swinging through and then initiating that next strike if he was trying to stay low like if we look at the guy out here in the red you know we're at 30 meters here he's still looking down which might work for some but you know, when we're looking at a guy who ran 980 with a little wind, if he doesn't have to stay down, do we have to stay down? I don't necessarily think so. So I really like that as he's coming out of this acceleration at, you know, 30 meters or so, his eyes are directly toward the finish line. He has, his goal is in mind, is getting through that finish line as fast as possible. And he's looking toward that finish line. He's not looking at the ground. He's not looking side to side. His eyes are on the finish. Now by this point, you know, he's already separated himself from bowling and bowling is really not going to have any opportunity to come back at this point. Um, if, if bowling's acceleration is good, he'll run a good race. But if he misses out, which I think there's a couple factors we can talk about as to why he missed out in this acceleration, um, you know, he's, he's not going to win. Terrence is just too good. So as they're up right here, You'll start to see that in the other uh, runners in the crowd, as, as they start to sense that, okay, this guy's pulling on us and it's pretty much game over, the stress starts to kick in. And we can see, you know, it looks like bowling's a little grimaced here. We got this guy out in this far outside lane. He's starting to lose his posture. You see this, look at this. See this shape? He's tying up, his back's starting to get tight. He's trying to push out the backside, which is causing him to slow down, which 
was causing him to be excessively backside with his leg motion, not really be able to produce a lot of force into the ground, and he starts losing it. Whereas Terrence, he's coming through the line, great posture, great head positioning, his arms are still being very efficient, he's not doing anything crazy to get through the line, he's not trying to, you know, dive for the line or anything, he's just sprinting through it. And so, I mean, from a, a fundamental sprinting standpoint, he has everything. He's got posture, he's got efficient movement, he's got good confidence, um, and all these things come together to make for a really fantastic performance. Now, I think at the start, um, Joseph Fambule here, in the white right here, he had a little flinch. See? A little flinch action right here, right before the gun goes off. Realistically, that probably killed his start because once you flinch, you know, you stress out a little bit mentally, it takes your mind off of what you're about to do. And it's possible that it also maybe distracted Matt a little bit because, you know, Matt Bowling is right here. And so if this guy next to him flinches, that's going to be in his field of view. So it might have disrupted his start a little bit. And really, out the gate, Terrence started separating. And then once that separation was made, you know, from here, he pretty much just maintains it. He doesn't necessarily pull away that much from Matt. This this gap kind of stays the same, but that gap was made early on. And this really points to the importance of efficient acceleration and, you know, trusting in that you can continue to accelerate up to top speed and not trying to rush, not trying to beat other people, uh, you know, like run a race dependent on them. Terrence here is just running his own race and it really shows. If we want to take a look at posture for a second, you know, obviously the pressure's on here. Matt is trying to maintain second place. It does look like he's tightening up a little bit. His, his hands are in fists. Um, his facial expression looks a little stressed. And his back, it looks like his back might be tightening up a little bit to where he's getting very upright but almost that lean back type of thing. Now, he, he tends to exhibit this just in general, like when he was in high school and ran 9-9, um, it, it almost looked like he was in that lean back type of position, so it might just be his thing, but I think it becomes a little bit um, over-exaggerated here at the end of the race when the pressure's on and he senses that he's not going to win, um, but obviously the most extreme version of that would be this guy over here, who his head is back, his chest is forward, his hips are back, his leg motion is back, and it's just... You know, it just falls apart. The reason we want good posture when we sprint is because, you know, our posture between our spine and our hips is going to dictate what our legs and our arms can do. And so if our posture is off, that's going to shift where our center of mass is, and that's going to change when our foot is on the ground in a certain position, how we're able to produce force on the ground. So maintaining this nice neutral posture allows Terrence to maintain his speed very well, whereas if he was bobbing and weaving and his you know, torso was all over the place, it'd be very hard for him to keep putting his feet down under him in a good position. So maintaining his posture here is key. Um, maintaining efficient movement is also key. He's not doing too much with his arms, he's just kind of letting them go through the range of motion that they want to go through. He's not spending excessive amounts of time on the ground. He's not kicking out in, from, in front of him excessively. He's just letting that leg come down under him, and then he picks it right back up and cycles it through to the next, next stride. Another thing I want to point out is in Terrence's acceleration, you know, there's nothing, there's nothing fancy going on. And that's why I wanted to point this out and look at this video is because it's an example of just having good fundamentals of sprinting. He's not toe dragging. He's not doing some fancy, you know, flip the bird with his hand or, you know, run squatted or whatever. He's just going. He's pushing himself into upright. He's pushing himself up into a tall position. And then once he's in an upright tall position, he's just striking up and down, picks the foot up, sets the foot down. His arms just striking down. And then the elbow comes up, hands down, elbow up, hands down, elbow up. He's maintaining good posture. You know, these are fundamentals that we can grab onto and, um, you know, use as our, our foundation when we sprint. There's nothing he's doing here that the rest of us can't do other than run the time that he ran. But from a technique standpoint, 
There's nothing that Terrence is doing that, you know, is super unique to him. He just runs very efficiently and maintains good posture and he's fast. He doesn't get stressed out clearly, you know. He, he knows that he's the dominant sprinter in this field and he lets the race come to him. He doesn't worry that at 10 meters, you know, the guy out here who ended up in last is possibly in first place or at least close to it. You know, maybe this guy's in first place, but all these guys are pretty close. But is he concerned? No, he just keeps building, keeps rising, keeps striking straight down under him, allowing his posture to rise. Now his eyes are on the finish. He's gonna start approaching full speed soon and that's when he really starts to create separation from the rest of the crowd. You can see in his face, he does not look stressed out. He looks confident, looks like he knows what he's trying to do, but he doesn't look stressed. Whereas if we look at Matt, his face is getting a little red. You know, he's starting to sense, uh-oh, this race is not gonna pan out how I want it to. But Terrence just sticks with it. We see these guys, this guy's grimacing. You can see his mouth is open a little bit. Um, these guys are like, well, RIP to our time. And it's really a, you know, something to, something to see just how quality of a run this is. So he ran 980, quite a good time. It was wind aided, but regardless, you know, I don't care how much wind you put behind me. If I ran 980, I'd be happy. So just wanted to show you guys this because this is a reminder that basic fundamentals of sprinting, such as keeping good posture, being forceful early, and then working to be faster later in the race, pushing ourselves into upright, and then once we are upright, maintaining that posture while having efficient movements and not trying to overwork and do too much or go through too big of a range of motion or anything like that, just letting our body do its thing as we put out max effort, that's what leads to a really high quality uh, result. And Terrence here shows us. Let's watch it one more time full speed. And from the middle of the race, it is now over and nobody can catch up, it creates that separation. And that's it so that's all for now guys I just wanted to break this down a little bit and talk about how these basic fundamentals are key to running fast and Terrence Laird is a an amazing example of what it means to run efficiently um, to not focus on doing anything fancy but simply running your race running well exhibiting good posture exhibiting efficient movement and how if you do that you have a great chance of running well so if you guys have any questions or comments if you see anything that you think is unique to this leave it in the comments below um, make sure to subscribe if you want access to more content get a membership but other than that this is cody bidlow with sprintingworkouts.com signing off